uh, since his appointment, uh, the Supreme Court justice is my first time uh, having him in the studio. Uh, it's a friend of joy, um, Justice Yonikulendi. Do you know how good it feels to say that? <laughs> good morning, sir. Good morning, Kujo, and thanks. Good morning to listeners. Thanks for having me again. It's always a pleasure. In fact, it should be my lord. Good morning, my lord. Uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, we'll be hearing more from Justice Kulendi and his colleagues who are here to tell us about something very important, some really important work they've done um, for the e- upcoming elections. Uh, we'll tell you all about it. And uh, that comes after the Joy Business Minute, which c- is brought to us every morning by the kindness of Consolidated Bank Ghana, CBG. We stand with you. Hello, welcome to the Joy Business Minute. It's brought to you by Consolidated Bank Ghana. We stand with you. Independent power producers and bulk distributors will withdraw services in the coming days. They are demanding ECG and government settle at least 80% of their indebtedness worth $1 billion as a matter of urgency. Telecom giant MTN wants to sell its additional 12.5% shares to staff of the firm. In a circular to investors, the company said it was also seeking their blessings to hold an extraordinary meeting to approve this move. Government has received a credit facility to fund the construction of rural telephony sites and internet connectivity infrastructure for more than 2,000 communities in the country. And Asian leaders are due to sign a mammoth trade deal this weekend that has been nearly a decade in the making. It includes the 10 members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations plus China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. That's the Joy Business Minute brought to you by Consolidated Bangana. Stand with you. It's two minutes past eight on the Super Morning Show. And in a minute, we'll be uh, uh, speaking with uh, Justice Kulendi. Uh, He stopped by the studio to tell us about some very important work that's been done um, for the upcoming elections. It's a manual um, that sets out what will be done in uh, in case of a certain eventuality, which every election um, could possibly uh, have. And uh, we'll be talking... Uh, to him about that shortly. First, though, paying taxes is an obligation to the state, and Consolidated Bank Ghana CBG is making payments stress free. Just dial star triple two hash and pay your customs duty, uh, Ghana Revenue Authority taxes, Environmental Protection Agency levies, Ghana Standard Authority, Food and Drugs Authority, and uh, levies for all other government services. You can pay at any Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited branch across the country, or just dial star triple two hash on all networks to make payments. Use CBG to pay all of your taxes for effectiveness. CBG is ISO certified, so uh, you can trust them. Go to cbg.com.gh for more details, or just call 0302 216 000. CBG. We stand with you. So we're celebrating the life of a uh, great leader of Ghana. And um, Justice Kulendi, I, I, um, I have no doubt that you knew and had a relationship with the, um, the late former president, Jerry John Rawlings. Uh, I wonder what your abiding memories of him will be. Well, could you, I mean, first of all, we're uh, a nation in mourning. Um, uh, and it, it's, it's a loss to country and the Ghanaian people. Um, President Rawlings is by every standard a phenomenal leader yeah. um, of our time and country. And I, I, I think that it's appropriate um, to say um, on behalf of His Lordship, the Chief Justice, um, Honorable Justice Chrissy and in um, and in that um, the condolences, deepest sympathies of the entire judicial service, mm-hmm. his lordship in person, the superior and lower courts and the, the entire judicial service go yep. to first to uh, the former first lady and the family. Um, as well as to the NDC family and the larger Ghanaian family. Uh, mm. President Rawlings belonged more to country, yeah. even to the African race, yeah. than, than to any particular group of people. Um, that said, um, 
you know, my, my personal habit usually is always been to avoid big men. And so <laughs> I had managed to um, avoid President Rawlings in all manner of circumstances. Really? Uh, sometimes nearing rudeness by declining <laughs> oh to take dear. his calls. Oh, but wow. you can trust him. He tracked me down. Mm. Um, we had a mutual friend. And then um, his current aide, um, Dr. Benu, oh, yes. had special duties to make sure that he waited for me in my office and tracked <laughs> me and got me to meet President Rogers. You, mm. you have to meet him. Mm. He, he, he was an, a very intriguing and infectious character. Yeah. And um, he he... He commented on everything from my haircut to my tie, my shirt, my <laughs> cufflinks, <laughs> my shoes, my socks. Yes. And and said that he he was inspired. He, he <laughs> that Ghana had a future. Oh and gosh. He, he is just mm. an infectious and Indeed. intriguing individual. No doubt. And our generation will forever remember him, his leadership, his impact. <coughs> Love or loathe him. He was a great leader. Yeah, he was a great leader. no doubt. And uh, there are many who will agree with you, uh, Justice Kulendi. I have no doubt about it. And uh, we are joined on the phones by um, uh, the man who leads uh, Action Chapel, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Uh, Archbishop Duncan Williams, it's it's always a pleasure. It's a pity about the circumstances this morning, but good morning. Uh, I think we may have. Uh, some issue with the line there. Um, Archbishop Duncan Williams, good morning to you. Hello? Right. Uh, we're going to see if we can um, uh, get the Archbishop's attention there and uh, get a few words from him. Um, and I'm also trying to get him. Yes. Papa is actually... I have avoided President Rawlings in Papa's office where we meet right at the door, oh, gosh. right, and I slipped and sneak out. <laughs> One of his great friends. Oh, yes, yes. indeed. Uh, let's see if we can uh, get him. Uh, 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 Archbishop Duncan Williams, good morning to you. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you clearly now. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. It's a pity about the circumstances this morning. Uh, we know that... Um, the late former president was a great friend of yours. Uh, today the nation mourns him, and I wonder what your own thoughts are of the man and his impact on the world. Um, again, it's a, it's a great uh, loss, uh, I believe, uh, for our nation and for, for nations, because he was loved by so many across nations that I visit or have visitors over the years. He is one <coughs> leader of this nation. Wherever you go, his name comes up and he was really loved and uh, celebrated. Uh, he came to me as a, uh, as a big shock because I was with him a few weeks ago during the time the mother passed and uh, uh, with him and the wife and the family and uh, prayed with him and all that. So I wasn't expecting this at all. And uh, I think I'm still, I'm still uh, grieving in my own way about um, the loss of this great patriarch and uh, a man that really cared for uh, this nation. And... Uh, I know that there are many people sharing their memories of him. Um, I wonder, for you, which encounter with the former president really defined his character for you? Uh, I'll, I'll be uh, making a press statement, uh, a, a press release, but I think one thing that really uh, warmed uh, my heart uh, where he's concerned was uh, during the 2000 election, I was then in the United States, and a few people who had called me and they were very concerned whether he was going to remain in power or he will relinquish power and hand over to uh, the, the Kufu administration. And so I, I called him just to talk with him and to uh, see what was going on in his mind. And 
he said something that really, really touched my heart. And uh, from that time, I saw him as one that really do care uh, for his country. He said to me, he said that um, he has done his best, and he believed it's time for him and his administration or government to, to leave for another to come and build this nation. And he did that. And some of the people who called me to talk to him were very surprised that uh, uh, he would do that because there was this uh, speculation going on that he wasn't going to let go power. And there were also people who didn't want him to leave and wanted him to hold on to power. And I think that one he made uh, was very, very courageous and he demonstrated love for country. Because can you imagine at that time, 2000, if he hadn't uh, moved on and allowed the new administration then to come in, Ghana would have gone back in 20 years. We wouldn't be where we are today. And so that made me to appreciate and to really respect him the more. Mm. You know, and, and that is one thing that is always with me that I always think about what could have happened uh, if he didn't uh, move on and have held on to power at that time. Yes. What would have happened to this country? And that for me uh, was a very, very uh, powerful uh, thing to do that. Mm. And that defined to me the man that he was, you know. Mm. Now, I know that you're on record to have said that one of the reasons why you got close to the uh, the former first family was because of God's plan for Mr. Rawlings. What was God's plan for Mr. Rawlings? Say it again. Say it again. I, 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 I said that you, you, you have said on record that uh, one of the reasons why you got close to the former first family uh, was because of God's plan for Mr. Rawlings. And I'm wondering, what was God's plan for Mr. Rawlings? Uh, but was he perhaps uh, destined to serve in God's vineyard? I think that one can define it, um, um, and I don't think this is the time also to go into that, but I believe that um, uh, the man had a lot of goodness. He had a lot of goodness, and uh, he demonstrated it in, in the best way uh, possible. Uh, he, he had so many lives, you know, in many, many, many ways. Um, he did a lot of good. I mean, I know a lot of people who he paid their school fees, helped them out, and he did so many good things uh, to help a lot of uh, families, you know, over the years. And he did this nation also. He did a lot of good in this nation. Uh, most times uh, we don't remember the good that leaders or people do. Uh, he, has, he had his regrets also because he and I, uh, we speak every now and then, you know, sometimes we pass by to come uh, to my office, we'll chat, and sometimes I'll just call him and go to his house and just spend time to chat with him in his bedroom where we talk. And... Uh, he had a lot of regret, but his triumph was more than his regrets. And I think this is the time to focus on the good of the man and also focus on love, uh, forgiveness, and mercy, and on his family mm. and uh, uniting this country yes. like never before in this difficult time in the history of nations, and especially our nation with election coming and everything. It's a time to reflect on unity and forgiveness mm. and love and the good of people. Yes. Now, if you permit me to say, Papa, you are a man who sees a lot. And uh, the, the, the death of the, the former president has come at a, at a rather critical time. What do you see to be the impact that his, uh, his departure will have on the political scene? Bearing in mind that he was still very active, you know, issuing statements, uh, playing a strong role in his party. W what do you see uh, to be the, the impact on Ghana Ghanaian politics uh, of his departure? The timing, the timing, uh, the timing for me is a very, very difficult uh, uh, time. Uh, 
Um, he, like you said, uh, he was a great boy, no matter how anybody boy. And uh, definitely, he will be missed. Uh, but we will we will continue to 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 go forward and uh, let his departure unite us and not to divide us. Uh, I think we shouldn't let his departure. Uh, divide us. It should rather unite us. And I also believe it's a wake-up call for every leader. It's a wake-up call for all of us. Because I saw him a few weeks ago, and we were talking, and uh, there was no sign about what has happened uh, in the atmosphere. I didn't sense anything. I didn't feel any danger around him. And what these two have happened, it's a wake-up call, and everybody must perform the duty for which we were all born. And I believe that he has uh, fought his uh, uh, fight. He's kept the faith. And uh, he's going to have a regret. We can't wait to uh, maximize the opportunities God has given us uh, in the light of this upcoming election where we can exercise our right as citizens of this country uh, for whatever we wish and want for the good of this country. So as much as it's departure uh, it's difficult and will be difficult, especially in the light of the upcoming election, I will pray and hope and wish that we will let his departure uh, be that unifies us and brings us together and everybody should reflect on their own life and uh, not be critical but to focus more on uh, where we go from here and to have his family in our thoughts and in our prayers like never before uh, at all time. Um, uh, if you just joined us, we're speaking to Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams on, on the uh, passing of the former President Jerry John Rawlings. Um, uh, finally, um, Papa, if I may impose on you uh, for a, a prayer, a short prayer for, for the family of the departed. Absolutely. Father, we thank you for Father, Thank you for uh, former President Rawlings and for the wife the grandchildren and for his loved ones for his loved ones we pray for the comfort of God the comfort of God to be with them to strengthen their hearts their hearts to this difficult time and to help them to recover and overcome this shock that we are all dealing with at this very difficult moment in the history of this country, that you will heal, heal this nation, heal us, heal our political parties, and help us focus on your love, on your forgiveness, and on mercy, or blessed and merciful, it's a lot of mercy. We focus and reflect on mercy, and also on the good of the goodness of the man, from the Rawlings, the goodness of the man, and uh, bless Joy from the staff of Joy FM, and all our media uh, personality and workers, our spirit, this country, help us to pray. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Uh, we thank you so much, uh, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, uh, for your time with thank us. You for the good work you do for this country, we appreciate it. I God. want you to know that. God bless All you. All of you out there, what is it? We appreciate that. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. God we bless are you. For you all. Wow. Thank you so much, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams.
20 minutes past 8 o'clock and our guests in the studio were very excited uh, that they're here with us uh, and um, they're here to tell us a little bit about uh, some very important work uh, that has been done in anticipation of our elections. Uh, I've already introduced you to um, one of the newest uh, justices of the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Yoni Kulendi. And uh, I hope you don't mind because I know I will not get this opportunity ever again. <laughs> so while you're with us, if you don't mind, let me just ask, what is it like? How does it feel, this new uh, national assignment you've taken up? Well, could you? Thanks. Um can I say that we, we defer this conversation to another day <laughs> and, and just permit me to um, deal with the, the assignment for which um, His Lordship the Chief Justice has sent me here this morning. Um, I, I know I cannot outmaneuver <laughs> Justice Kulendi. You, I'm great. I, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, but if I hadn't asked that question, I would have been fired. No okay. doubt about that. <laughs> So, so um, let, let's get to the conversation. It is an important one. Uh, the Judicial Service has done some work. You've put together a manual um, which is uh, invaluable in any election. It is the adjudication manual um, upon which we will fall, if need be, in our election. Um, first, perhaps we'll start uh, just broadly um with a bit of understanding uh, from you of the general relationship, the link between the judiciary um, and the democratic governance and, of course, um, particularly elections. Well, so could you thanks. And, I mean, first of all, um, democracy is, 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 is the, the manner in which we have elected to govern ourselves. Um, that manner is set out um, in rules. Mm. Um, the primary source of these rules being the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. And therefore, in your uh, basic government class, they would say democracy is governed by the rule of law. And, and so... Um, Legality, rules, and law are at the heart of democracy. And the Constitution, which is the basic, sets out the basic framework of our democracy, invests the power of adjudication in the judiciary, specifically Article. 125 says that justice emanates from the people, yeah. but it is exercised in the name of the republic by the judiciary, yeah. which shall be independent and does not answer to anybody, not the executive, not the judiciary, and not, not the legislature, legislature, but answer only to the constitution. Mm. And therefore, the referee in this system of government we have chosen is the judiciary mm -hmm. who acts in sacred trust for and on behalf of the Ghanaian people who are the true repositories of the powers of justice. Indeed. And, and therefore, the, 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 the judiciary becomes central as the one that interprets the rules mm. of the game as the one that adjudicates disputes in the game and in so doing applies the rules. Right. And so if you want, uh, you cannot have democracy without a judiciary at the center. Mm. And the game that the judiciary referees is democracy. Indeed. And uh, that is, of course, epitomized by our elections. So, what is it that made the Judicial Service decide um, 
to produce a manual on uh, election adjudication. But so, so first, first of all, the the history of this manual on election adjudication goes back to um, about 2000, and the credit goes to her ladyship C.J. Wood. Oh yes, uh, who pioneered the publication of the first edition. Mm. I, I guess it, it can be said that, you know, in all of the kinds of disputes that society has to contend with, one of, if you want, for obvious reasons, the potentially most toxic disputes that you can have, contestation or disputation, mm. would be disputes that relate to elections. Because elections determines who or which group of people are for the time being entrusted with the powers of overseeing our entire life, our development, our resources, etc., etc. So it's become a high-stakes game. And if disputes that arise in relation to such a high-stakes game are not satisfactorily and appropriately resolved, then country and people are at risk. I guess it was these concerns that informed the initial publication. Mm. There have been a first, a third, a second, a third, and now a fourth. What His Lordship Chief Justice Christian Ninyabua has done is recognizing the importance of the material that this manual affords he elevated the processes and, 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 and to understand that the first publication was pioneered largely, you know, um, around consultants with um, donor funding yeah. and support. Um, His Lordship Chief Justice Enia Boa has domesticated the process. He put together a high-powered committee um, I'm the youngest member, Gifty Nyakupreko is our indefatigable secretary. I, mm. I mean, she you, you just have to see her at this court, <laughs> in this wave of Supreme Court justices. Mm. Um, um, is chaired by His Lordship Justice Doche, um, Justice Sule Badebe, Justice Bafo Boni, yep. Justice um, um, Tanko Amadu, Honyanuga. Um, Justice Marfusel, in, in mm-hmm. order, I have skipped mm-hmm. the order of seniority. <laughs> it's extremely important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 then, um, um, no, I've mentioned His Lordship Justice Marfu Bonnet, yeah. and um, we have Justice said and he's a J of the Court of Appeal, mm-hmm. and then the um, Justice, um, um, the Deputy Judicial Secretary, um, Buachi Yadom, mm-hmm. and. Of course, my my uh, good self, mm-hmm. um, the most junior ranking Supreme Court member of the committee, <laughs> and and Gifty, as I said, is is our secretary. So mm-hmm. so just the CJ elevated it, made domesticated it, and charged this committee with the responsibility of revising, mm-hmm. improving, and updating the 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 manual. And it's also important that he has managed to do this essentially on on um, the judicial services own very lean resources. Wow. But it's because of the priority that he puts um, on this, and and the need to make sure that this very important material mm. is 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 available. Yeah. If you just joined us, we're we're having a conversation. In fact, we're learning. Uh, from His Lordship Justice Yoni Kulendi, uh, Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, he's here with some colleagues. Uh, Mrs. Gifty Prekunyako is the Deputy Director of Judicial Reforms and Projects. She's also the Secretary of a very important committee that has done some very important work. It's the Election Manual Review Committee. Uh, Mr. Kulendi, of course, is a member of that committee, and Mrs. Nyaku is the Secretary. So the manual has been um, produced. And... Um, it's important, right? I think it's easy to imagine that it's important to have a manual for adjudication. Uh, but in our unique circumstances as a nation in Ghana, why is it so important to have something pre-produced, if you will, in case there is a need for adjudication? 
Good. So could you, you, you realize I have alluded to two things. Mm. One, that the Ghanaian people are the repository of the, the powers of justice. Yes. That as judges, the judiciary acts as trustees for the Ghanaian people yeah. from whom justice emanates. Mm. Now, then I have also underlined the fact that elections are in their nature a high-stakes game mm. and can be, if not properly managed, a potential source of trouble. Yeah. Now, if the spectators at a football game and the stakeholders, the teams, their committees, their referees, their technical mm. advisors, all have a functional understanding of the rules of the game. When the referee makes a determination or an adjudication and awards a penalty or a free kick mm. or disallows a goal, that decision is more likely to resonate with the people who are primarily familiar with the rules of engagement of the game than people who are blind to the rules of the game. Mm. Now, what this manual does is that this manual is a compilation mm -hmm. of all relevant legislation, constitutional provisions, statutes, legislative instruments, up to date. It tells you those which are repealed, those which are included, those which are current. It gives you an inventory and a comprehensive appendix of even actually all the laws. Mm -hmm. Then it gives you an inventory of all relevant, significant cases that have been adjudicated by superior court in the past. Right. Right. which set out the game and how the courts have responded to all of the various issues. It is to avail to the stakeholders, the electoral commission, yeah. the political parties, to students, to lawyers, to judges, a working manual that when we have, and particularly that we're in this atmosphere, all of the frenzy and yeah. the expectation and that, 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 attends this game of political contests. Mm. Bearing in mind that in any contest there can be a dispute, mm -hmm. it, it, it makes transparent what has happened before, what the rules are, and what is likely to happen. Yeah. There's no better way to give in back to the people, the true custodians of the power, and, and also being accountable. Mm. So this is how this game you have entrusted to us is played mm. is to democratize if you want the system the process of election dispute adjudication mm. that's that's the the the, the way mm. to put it if i may mm. uh, we're talking with justice kulendi and uh, uh, the fourth edition that's what you, you you said it is right the fourth edition of this manual is about to be launched tell us about the launch where and um when will it be and and who can attend the, the, the launch is structured to take two forms because of the environment in which we find ourselves. Um, the, the plan is to have a launch with, uh, which is physical with attendees and that will be essentially by invitation. Right. And then there will be invitees who will be connect in virtually. Right. Um, originally, a date, time and place had been set but given where we woke up to find ourselves in the history of the nation, yeah. His Lordship the Chief Justice has suspended an announcement of the date and place to abide the plans and um, that, 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 that would follow mm. from, from this colossal loss that has just hit the country. Indeed. Um, and, and I guess it is, it is customary mm. and, and only proper um, that, that he does so. Yeah. And so the date will be announced in due course. Mm. Um, but we, he thought that it was still appropriate to go ahead to, to indicate yeah. the, the pendency of the material, mm. but also more importantly to use this opportunity um, to convey um, um, his, his personal sympathy yeah. Um, to the family, to the nation, mm. and and as well as that of the entire service. Yeah. 
against the backdrop, a backdrop of um, you know sad news. It's great to have something like this to look forward to. So we will await the announcement of of the date. Uh, now, following the launch, I have no doubt uh, as a, it'll be a public document. We can find it and buy copies. I'm sure. It is it is a public document, and and it's curious, could uh, you what what the service has done in the past, and mm. I I kind of still struggle with that. <laughs> in in the past, um, um, because they managed to raise donor funding, but believe it or not, this very essential handbook is distributed free of charge. Wow. Um, wow. I I am of the view that <laughs> going forward. <laughs> <laughs> it, it should be sold to recover the cost because <laughs> the, the judiciary, as I am discovering, mm. is, is 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 very challenged, and, yeah. and I and I find it a very tall order that that notwithstanding, mm. his lordship, the chief justice, is, is determined to keep the tradition, yeah. and and for now the decision is actually still remains the same. I don't know. I hope that he changes it <laughs> uh, because the, poli- the, the stakeholders in in these electoral processes mm. um, somehow tend to have money and are able to spend money on mm. all manner of things. So. Uh, why won't you buy your Bible that will be very <laughs> handy for you, your lawyers, <laughs> and your advisors yeah, when you are yeah. contemplating your mm. options? Mm-hmm. So you may even save yourself the pain of an expensive litigation. Indeed. But um, the, the tradition has always been to supply the copies to the Electoral Commission, to the political parties, to judges mm-hmm. and magistrates across the board. Yep. actually place some in the libraries of stakeholder institutions such as yep. the faculties etc etc mm. and and with such a huge distribution and and given the the investment even the intellectual work that has gone into this i, I my personal recommendation to his lordship the chief justice <laughs> is that um we should at least recover cost for mm. for this so that we can continue to do the good work mm. but Unless I, I, he is persuaded by the <laughs> likes of me, it, this very hugely important material will be free. Mm. I just am struggling to understand why we should give it free to members <laughs> of the bar who will charge their clients. Mm. <laughs> oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yes. Uh, we can give it free to judges, uh-huh. but not to members of the bar and not to the political stakeholders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, you make, you, make a, you make a very convincing argument. Even, even I, who would definitely benefit from it. I'm almost convinced that it's better for me to pay for it than to receive it for free. For you, that's why you're my brother. <laughs> we'll see if the chief justice... Gift you should start writing a memo <laughs> and we should persuade his, my Lord Justice Doche to sign it um, and, and in order to, to, hmm. to force the hands of his Lordship the chief justice. We'll see. We'll see if that, uh, if that ensues for the next election. But uh, for this one, we are grateful that uh, it is available and will be uh, available following the launch um, free of charge. Uh, maybe for the last time, if Justice Kulendi has anything to do with it. Um, so, uh, final thoughts? Uh, anything that you feel the public needs to know about the work of the Judicial Service or the Supreme Court uh, at this important time? Um, I, I guess that, you know, even the, the publication of this manual itself is, is an indication of the, the, the intent of of the judicial service mm. and and um, particularly um, the 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 leadership to make transparent and accountable its work for and on behalf of the Ghanaian people mm. that the service and and judges are not what people perceive them to be um, it's you were asking me about my experience, mm. but it, it's not an easy place to be to make a determination among men and whether they agree or disagree, hmm. uh, they're bound to live with the outcomes yeah. and, and particularly at the level of, of the, the, the Supreme Court. Mm. And, and so this manual is, is one of the many processes and I believe um, 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 will be will precede a lot of the things that you will be seeing um, in terms of efforts to bring justice close to the people 
efforts to make the people understand what judges do, how they do it, and some of the reasons why mm. cases or disputes conclude in the way mm. in which they do. Yeah. Um, because the confidence of the Ghanaian people in the administration of justice mm. is, is key. Yeah. Um, that elections will occasion disputes, self-evident. Look at what is happening across the Atlantic. Absolutely. And as you can see, the suits have already started flying left, mm -hmm. right, center. Mm -hmm. And and ultimately, um, unless President Trump wakes up on another side of his brain, he's <laughs> most likely headed for the Supreme Court. Yep. And we've, we've seen our, our share of it. And um, for me, I mean, transiting from from the place of a lawyer now to 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 where I now uh, uh, providence has landed me, I think it's I, I encourage people seek out and find this kind of material, particularly stakeholders in the process. Yeah. Do yourself um, 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 good of trying just to read it, if not for anything, read it as a manual, as a difficult manual. It's been made user-friendly, easy to read, easy to research. The material is, is, is cut out like lactogen for, you know, economics without tears. This, this mm. is an <laughs> a election dispute resolution w without, without tears. tears. <laughs> Take a look at it. Could you, it will do one good thing. Mm. You know, in our confusion, we all tend to resort to lawyers for advice. Yes. And, and it's amazing the kind of law, advice mm. that lawyers give. Sometimes <laughs> very ingenious, sometimes mm. unfortunately very disingenuous. Yes. But where the potential prospective client or prospective litigant has not taken the trouble to, to um, acquire the most elementary or functional education in the enterprise, then you are at the mercy of lawyers. Mm -hmm. And, and and that's how lawyers find um, importance. And so if you at least read the manual, you'll be able, if you're an MP seeking to challenge your election, ask your lawyer some hard questions, you know, <laughs> in order to enable you to make the decision whether it's worthwhile. And, and at all levels in the potential sources of election disputation, mm. uh, because you know my theory about law, that, you know, to the extent that a lot of it is logic and common sense, most Indeed. educated people, if you are diligent and you research and you read, you can pitch your logic and uh, logical and common sense arguments against every other lawyer mm. or judge. And so it's it's just that useful and that important in material. Um, it's user friendly, mm. straightforward. It's the the a lot of the very technical things are taken out, but practically every material, mm. whether it's a constitutional provision, it is a statute, a mm. subsidiary legislation mm. that affects elections and election disputes are contained mm. in this volume. Yeah. So it, it's a one-stop shop where you can find 90, 95, if not 100 percent of everything mm. you need to inform your decision. Mm. So it's as good for the lay person as it is even for professional lawyers and judges and magistrates mm. and political parties and their advisors and all their judicial committees, mm. etc., etc. Yeah. And so I, I recommend it unreservedly. The CJ thinks that it's extremely important, mm. and that is why, against tradition, hmm. um, he permits us to be here on his warrant Indeed. to make this hugely <laughs> important announcement to the Ghanaian people. Yes, a warrant which I think I have well and truly stretched uh, <laughs> almost to the limit of my uh, <laughs> my permission. Um, but uh, you you must forgive me for that because to me, um, you and your colleagues are the best of us. You know, um, it is your intellect and wisdom that our nation uses as the tools to sculpt the monument of our destiny. So um, I'm very grateful that you made the time um, Thank you. to be with us here Thank today. You. His Thank Lordship, you oh, Thank it's you. our pleasure. It's our pleasure Thank indeed. You, Thanks Thank to your you. colleagues as well. And that, of course, was the voice of His Lordship, Justice Yoni Kolendi of the Supreme Court. We'll tell you when that manual is available so we can all pick it up uh, for a bit of uh, bedside reading in anticipation of the election. 
There's a lot more to come on the Super Morning Show. I would hate for you to miss a moment of it. It's all dedicated, of course, to the memory of the late, the great, Jerry John Rawlings. Stay with us. You've all heard of one day of Black Friday, but have you heard of 28 whole days of Black Friday? James Stores is definitely changing the game by turning 2020 into 2020. Get unbeatable deals like the Lenny 5kg size jasmine fragrant rice for only 51.99 CDs or a Lenny 5 liter sunflower oil for only 59.99 CDs. You don't want to sleep on this one because when it's gone, it's gone. Now, this is what we call a once in a lifetime experience. Deals will be valid from the 11th to the 17th of November. Visit gamestores.com.gh or your nearest store. T's and C's apply. <laughs> See, my friend, respite is something we all need in hard times when we have no tool. A bank that cares is a bank worth doing business with. Just imagine you having an obligation and you cannot take care of it in this COVID era or not being able to continue that project you started. You can take that pressure off simply by choosing GCB's special personal loan package for salary workers, which also offers a two-month repayment moratorium and a reduced interest rate of 24% for all salary customers who apply for the loans between now and December. And for government workers, an increased loan term of up to 48 months awaits you. <laughs> GCB, your bank for life. Hello everyone, Huntech Markets is an award-winning financial technology firm with over 30 years of industry experience, with presence in 12 countries globally, and is now in Ghana, and is pioneering taking the global financial market, that is Forex, commodity, cryptos, and indices, teachings from offline to online, using an award-winning video conferencing software. The online class would avail you the opportunity to learn how to make money on the global financial market, in the comfort of your homes, using your internet-based smartphone or a laptop. You can use this as an opportunity to learn a skill set that would enable you to make money trading in the global financial market and guess what the training is absolutely free so how can you take part of this once in a lifetime opportunity simply sms your name and location to this number 050-992-8008 again 050-992-8008 and our executives will call you to reserve a space for you and also guide you through on how you can be connected to one of the online classes